It's not for planning and zoning to respond to the comments. So the purpose is for you to give your comments. Everything's going to be taken in notes. And when we go to our meeting, which is scheduled for February 2nd, that's when all those comments are brought to the, um, to the commission. Uh, we have a work session, listen, talk about all the comments, and uh, make changes or not from those comments. So I just want to be really clear that everybody understands that A, there's no vote tonight on the TLPCD, and that number two, we're not up here to respond to uh, comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Phil Michalowski. I'm with uh, uh, my Vone and McGroom, who were commissioned by the town to uh, assist in the update of the uh, plan of conservation and development. What, what I'd like to do is give you a little background on what a POCD is and its role uh, in the uh, range of uh, uh, documents that municipalities uh, have, have to work with. Uh, and then I'm going to put uh, some uh, communications into the record that were either delivered tonight or were uh, filed on uh, uh, the town website uh, for, for this purpose. Um, POCD is, uh, is a requirement of, of state statute for every municipality in Connecticut. Uh, they essentially is what used to be called the old comprehensive plan or town plan. Uh, uh, they added conservation and development to it. Uh, it's a, uh, a document that's required to cover a number of topic areas. Uh, and it uh, uh, is, a, is a policy document. It's aspirational in its in, intent. It, uh, it expresses what the town would like to, to accomplish over, over a decade, over a 10 year period. Uh, the time frame is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is on a decade basis. Uh, when it's in place, the state of Connecticut's activities within a community uh, have to reference that document. Uh, and uh, one of its strongest points that is uh, a town requesting state aid uh, has to have a POCD in place. So a recent addition to the statute that has been put in place, uh, uh, I think like five years ago, uh, where uh, uh, if there's not an adopted POCD in place that's current, um, uh, state aid uh, will be withheld uh, to, uh, to a community. That's, that's the first time that's happened. Uh, this statute's been on the books for 40 years plus or so. Now, in terms of the process locally, um, uh, this um, update, and the update is for the adopted plan, uh, that's a 2005 plan, that's what is, uh, is in place now. Um, and this, uh, this brings that up to 2015. Uh, the, uh, the process kicked off in the winter of 2013, and, and basically 2014 was spent in the, the process of updating. There were um, uh, online uh, survey questionnaires to the community. There were some charrettes, uh, a series of, of, of workshops, and then uh, the open meetings of the Planning uh, and Zoning Commission uh, where various elements of the plan uh, were, uh, were discussed. Uh, the, I mean, the, the elements are, are quite broad. It covers uh, um, the demographics and housing and economic development and transportation and natural resources, open space, historic and community resources, sustainability, uh, and also then a uh, future land use plan, which is uh, on, that, uh, on that board. Um, one of the key things I want to realize, I'm sure you know, I know many of you are here uh, because of the concern over the uh, over the country club uh, of, of property, um, that that's a distinct issue. There's uh, we've we've seen and been sent uh, a number of communications about uh, uh, about the, the linkage to zoning. I want to I want to be very clear that zoning is a 
is a, uh, is a separate statutory uh, uh, process. This is governed by uh, uh, Section 8-23, and zoning is 8-10. Uh, uh, and it, uh, it's regulatory in its form. So any recommendations, and the document does suggest, and, and that's the distinction, the su suggests certain zoning changes be made uh, in, a, in a variety of areas. Um, that doesn't mean that it becomes uh, it becomes regulatory. What has to happen? The commission has to make a decision to pursue the recommendation, and then there's the zoning process itself. And you have to draft specific zoning language and apply it to uh, an area, and uh, then that goes through a, a full process. And, uh, uh, separate set of hearings and, and consideration. So I just uh, I want to make that distinction because I think you know many of you are are here uh, uh, kind of reacting to information that's 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 been that's been distributed. Um, I think the, the plan has been on the website for uh, quite a number of months, and even as it was being uh, evolved, that draft was was uh, on, on the website to, uh, to, be, uh, uh, to be looked at and, and commented on. So uh, I think that's enough for me. This meeting is, is for you to express, uh, express your, uh, your issues and, uh, uh, to the commission so that they're uh, fully informed for their, for their work session uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in some coming, coming times. Um, what? I would like to do now is put uh, certain communications into the into the record. I'll compile them here, and then I'll turn them all over uh, to you. Uh, uh, delivered tonight, uh, and what I'm going to do, uh, so I don't take up time, is not read them, but I'll give a, a date and um, describe the communication. Um, tonight, the three-page. Uh, a three-page uh, submission by uh, by Jim Urbano was was uh, uh, submitted. A uh, one-page uh, submission by Susan and Douglas Israel was provided. Um, a it's like eight-page uh, submission from the Woodbridge Land Trust was provided. Um, in terms of uh, items that were provided on the website, um, a errata sheet from the uh, Recreation uh, uh, Commission was, uh, was submitted. Uh, a submission from uh, D. Kotchkis on November 6th, an email. Another email, that's uh, the same one. Uh, from uh, Drew Bear on January 27th, uh, one page. Uh, another email uh, dated uh, January 28th from a Mary Wilson, one page. And then um, I have, I guess, one, one page from uh, Diane King on um, on October 4th. That's what I, that's what we have received. So I think with that, the uh, floor is open for, for comment. My name is Jerry Farrell, Sr. I'm an attorney. I'm here representing the tradition golf course at Oak Lane. I've noticed that the designation from unprotected open space to open space recreation has been put into the draft document. I'm not totally sure what the change implies, but they're concerned that it might be a roadmap to somehow affecting their ability to use the property in different ways in the future. So that they would like to see the property stay as it was. They 
did buy it that long ago. And, uh, you know, I, I recognize I can't quite report on it, but as to their use of the property, they hope the golf course always continues as it is. But, uh, you might know some golf courses, including the town's golf course, hasn't done that well. And no one knows what the future lies. So they are opposed to having their designation changed. Thank you. Chuck Pine, 162 Central Road. Uh, all the comments I'm going to make tonight have to do with page 27 of the proposed plan. And the three areas I can comment on very briefly. Uh, one is, uh, one of the bullet points is to adopt revisions to resident A zone to provide for active adult and open space conservation subdivision options. I think this is the camel's nose inside the tent. Residence A is what most of the town is. I think it's what's protected us as a rural community for lo these many decades. And I think to make such a dramatic change is dangerous to the town. Uh, I would also wonder, since uh, this document was prepared in November, and we just got a whiff of the Toll Brothers proposal for the, the golf course on Tuesday, it seemed like an odd parallel, and maybe it was clairvoyant that you guys are envisioning this when you compare the document in November, and we're just hearing back now. Moving on. Another bullet point says, adopt revision to residential and village mixed unit districts to allow accessory units for related persons in existing and future single family homes. If I read this properly, it means that you're going to allow additional buildings on what's now a resident A property, acre and a half or better. Uh, I, I think that too uh, is very destructive to the rural nature of the town. And I would further argue that enforcing the term related persons is going to be very tough for us to do as a town. Define related. Third question three times removed, college roommate sister. I mean, what's, what's related? So I think that's, that's dangerous as well. Uh, the third point is talking about revisions to the village district designation. Uh, the point, uh, the bullet is provide design guidelines and a pattern book based on local historic architecture, including elements of form-based code approaches to promote a consistent, high-quality built form. I, I guess that sounds nice, you don't want it to be ugly, but I would just ask you, did you ask anybody who currently owns those properties in the village district or who has development plans that have been put on hold? Is this a help to them or a hurt to them? Uh, I think that you know where, where we do have zoning that allows mixed use and where we have people who are interested in putting some development up of, of some type, is, is this restriction anywhere in line with what they were planning? Uh, maybe this encourages that sort of development, which I think some people would be in favor of. I, I would be, because it's down where, where I think we want it. Uh, but if this hamstrings uh, developers who have other plans, you know, what's, what's the point of this? And did you get any feedback from any of those folks who are currently invested in those properties? Thank you. Can I just remind Thank you very much. Right over here. Uh, my name is Michael Broderick, and I live at Five Old Still Road in Woodbridge. I've lived in Woodbridge since 1976, and I've owned three different homes in Woodbridge um, in varying neighborhoods which we have all kinds of homes in Woodbridge, all different sizes. Um, and like most people in, in town, you know, I started with a smaller home and worked up to a larger home. A lot of people did that, although a lot of people come here for their final homes. Uh, I also own the Woodbridge Veterinary Hospital at 1746 Litchfield Turnpike, so I'm a pretty significant taxpayer. And as I looked at this plan of conservation and development, I was pretty horrified. Also, I have experience about uh, planning and doing the town plan because I was on the zoning board and with a group of other people wrote the last plan of conservation and development. Um, but th this plan uh, 
disturbed me for a number of reasons. First of all, I'll give you a little history of the last plan. When we initially started to write it, we also had a consultant that we started with, and we realized that they were trying to make Woodbridge fit into a little box of current trendy ideas and planning and zoning. It, our town, you know, it, it didn't represent our town. So we fired our consultant, and I think you should have fired your consultant because they did a really lousy job. Uh, we ended up writing the plan ourselves because we thought we could best represent what the town wanted. And we had groups of people that we organized just like your charrettes. The difference is we didn't conquer and divide people. We let people at the charrette meetings actually speak about each of the ideas that they were interested in. So it was a very different process. And I think we produced a plan where A, we didn't spend $75,000 of the taxpayer's money, which angers me as well. And we, we produced a plan that was really well liked in all parts of town. We had really no controversy about it at all. So this plan that you generated seems to be really quite different. And there is a lot of controversy about it. The more I speak to people about it, the more people are upset about it. <clears throat> and I think it also reflects priorities of this uh, current town administration that, you know, again, it's the uh, tail wagging the dog. They're telling you what they want, and you provide it instead of being a more independent force for town. We did not have that influence. The plan we wrote was very innovative. It created the village district, and the village district was, was actually one of my babies. I took it from numerous town plans, including Litchfield, and actually people in town can see the result of what good planning gives us. All the buildings that are commercial buildings that come before you have had their facades upgraded. The whole area looks nicer. People like Jim Urbano, even though he didn't have to, complied with the ideas when he built his uh, commercial complex in Bradley Road. And it's yielding for a very different look down there than we've had in the past. We paid most attention to that area of town because that area of town we thought was the most neglected. This plan does exactly the opposite. Where we protected residents' single-family homes, this plan jeopardizes paying people's single-family homes. For instance, I was really upset because I thought it was kind of underhanded, slipped in uh, is a change, a zoning change, that makes all of the zoning degraded to residential D. For people who don't know what that means, residential D essentially is uh, Manila Avenue and Merritt Avenue. Not that those are bad neighborhoods, but it allows for one and two family housing. This plan enforces that on people who have single family homes along Litchfield Turnpike, eastern side of Litchfield Turnpike. I looked at where it was proposed in their own plan. From my office down to Bradley Road, all those houses now could be made into not just two family, but if you add accessory apartments, three family. So why we would do that when it wasn't requested, those people are my neighbors, my clients, and I know them, and friends, and I didn't hear one of them request that zoning change, but somehow this board took it upon itself with our planners to think that that's okay. I'm not sure why, and I, and I wonder, were, this, were these board members who don't live in that neighborhood, would you like two family homes all of a sudden in a single family district where you live? In our town, where we've seen most problems are where you have rental housing, which is two family. Those are, you know, we've seen some properties become dilapidated down there, and that's what two family often yields. It yields rentals. So why we would encourage that? I think again, Malone and McBroom trying to make us fit into a box that Woodbridge shouldn't fit into. 
We don't need greater density down there. We need high quality development. And they just seem to focus on density. And that's, that's the wrong idea for this town. If you live down in that neighborhood and, or work in that neighborhood, you know already we have momentous traffic problems. Why would we want to build, you know, much more density where, where you know, it's, it, it already is causing such, such problems? And in our previous plan of conservation and development, we had an age-restricted zone. That was it. That was for the areas along Bradley Road. Why do we need to change anything significantly from that? You know, I'm not against the idea of as the properties, commercial properties, are upgraded or redeveloped, that we have a few apartments above those. But we shouldn't damage stable, single-family neighborhoods and neighborhoods with both single and two-family homes. Those are very nice, stable neighborhoods. And I just don't understand it's all over this plan, and it makes no sense at all. The next thing I want to talk about is the Country Club of uh, Woodbridge. The Country Club of Woodbridge is, again, there's all kinds of statistics throughout this plan. We were told that in a charrette, you know, 90 people showed up. There were 269 people who responded to the survey. But why did we get the statistic that in a referendum to allow multifamily cluster housing very similar to what's proposed in this plan was voted down two to one? I didn't see that in any of the statistics that Malone and, 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 and the groom provided us. And maybe that's because when you have these guys as your consultants, they have their own set of interests. They work with developers, they're not from Woodbridge, and they may not even understand what upsets people, again, just trying to make us fit into a box that we don't want to fit into. So the Country Club of Woodbridge is a disaster because what it does is it changes zoning residential A. The whole character of most of Woodbridge, which is residential A, has been set for many, many years. And the reason the town looks like it does, with you know, large lots, spread out homes, is because we kept with that zoning. Why all of a sudden, because we have an administration that's worried about the finances of the country club, would we throw away our residential A zoning and allow for active age communities? you know, to be built in those zones. It also opens up development in lots of other parcels of town because developers are gonna come in and say, well, the town just did that to the Woodbridge Country Club. What about that land at Mary Mountain Farm? Why can't we uh, put uh, cluster housing there? And then if we don't want that, they can say, well, Woodbridge doesn't have enough low-cost housing. We're gonna inc include that in our proposal and we're gonna override your zoning rate. That's what your plan is going to open us up to. All through town, we could have a total change of character because of the thoughtlessness displayed by the zoning changes in this plan. And uh, I'm just, I'm really, really horrified. And I, I thought to myself, what can you do about this? It seems to be pushed and pushed, even though people voted it down to the one. And you know, most people in town know me, a lot of people know me as a veterinarian. They know I'm a liberal Democrat. But I think the only way to make big changes here is to throw out the people who keep pushing this on us. And that's who <laughs> so I don't think have malicious intent, but they're but they're very thoughtless about how it affects other people in town, both in the flats and all through residential A. There's so many alternatives. Our plan was not bad, it was already there. It might have needed to be updated and tweaked. It did not need a major overhaul, as this plan uh, asked us to do. And I hope the town is gonna come out and just vote this thing down. And you know, but of course it's gonna be your decision. And I hope that you people will act a little more independently than, than you have in the past, because what you're giving us can really lead to the destruction of what this town is and why people move here in the first place.
And that's all I have to say. My name is Anthony Stango. I live down in the flats of Woodbridge. And it's getting kind of boring that we keep going over all these same old ridiculous ideas that the board seems to have. The flats of Woodbridge, my family has lived there for 109 years. We also occupy, I think, about 10 or 12 building lots down there, so we pay a couple dollars in taxes also. Oh, sorry. Um, what part did we hear? The whole thing? <laughs> okay. So my family occupies nine building lots down there in the flats of Woodbridge. And everything gets shoved down our throats down there. You guys are trying to put anything and anything, anything and everything you can in the flats of Woodbridge. I would like to see, you know, um, your properties, whomever lives here in Woodbridge, I'd like to see your properties divided into nine building lots and shove all kinds of two, three family houses in your backyards to see how you would like the, the commotion that we have to endure down in the flats of Woodbridge. As you know, we've been beating this dog to death several times, and it's getting nowhere, and it's getting really boring and really tiring. So I don't know what you're going to do, I don't know how you're going to do it. I'd like you guys off the board also because we're going absolutely nowhere. It's a big circle. It keeps around circling and circling and circling. Um, I don't know who brought these ideas down to the flats. It's about time we start to look at the flats of Woodbridge from the, the, the ugliness that's down there that no one seems to be pointing out. The house in the corner of Bradley and Litchfield Turnpike, that if a good wind comes, it's going to blow it over. No one's worried about that. The piece of property that sits on Amley Road where uh, C and Cola Motors used to be looks like, I don't even know the word to use for that. So where, where are these ideas not being brought up? It's getting very ugly down in the flats of Woodbridge. I call it the flats, I don't know what you guys choose to call it. I was born and raised there, so it's the flats to me. And my family is sprawled all over this room right now. Not all of them, but enough of them. And you know, we're tired of it. We keep, you know, we're talking just for one second. We had a meeting a couple months ago about the speeding on Lambton Street. Oh yeah, we'll take care of that. I haven't heard a word in almost three months. So why are, we bother, why are we bother talking about these things and zero gets done about it? Is it really that much of rocket science history that, that this, this needs to be done like this? It's pretty simple to me. So I, I, don't, I don't get any of you, not one of you, can I understand where you're getting these ideas from and why it's being shoved down our throat. It's time for Woodridge to change these zoning laws and not in the flats of Woodbridge. Come down, live down there, see the traffic, see the craziness that happens down in Woodbridge in the flats. Live there for a year, and let's see if you guys like to deal with what we have to deal with. Um, yeah, flat family, anything you want to me? Am I doing okay? Okay. Um, so, I'm trying to stay as calm as I can. I'm getting tired of coming here and talking to the board about all of these ridiculous ideas that you all seem to have. And um, nothing can get it done. You're wasting my time. You're wasting everybody else's time here. When is there going to be some sort of solution that benefits in a positive way the flat support groups? I don't, I don't want to get on the country club, because that's another abortion. Um, so, that's probably all I have to say for now. Um, I'll be glad when you guys are gone.
Uh, good evening, Commission. Uh, uh, my name is Frederick Carousel. I live at 1725 Richfield Turnpike. I've been a resident of Woodbridge for the past 70 plus years. My family's been a resident of Woodbridge, I'm going to say about 115, 116 years. Um, I wanted to point out to this commission that I'm taken very aback at the proposal of uh, rezoning uh, my district from single family buildings to multi family buildings. A, I believe that that will deteriorate the area that I live in. B, it will add tremendously dense, dense density to the ongoing traffic in the area. I've been retired now for the past six years and I want to advise you that from 7.30 to 20 minutes to 8, if I did not get out of my driveway, it would have taken me 35 minutes to get down to the Mary Parkway Bridge. It appears that that has not changed. I'm not up in the morning at 7 o'clock anymore, but uh, I can still hear the traffic go by. The people um, in the my district um, maintain their property. They maintain their single-family dwelling. It is not a run-down community. It's a very proud community. That community in the 40s and 50s was primarily resident by blue-collar workers. That is not the case anymore. That is mostly white-collar workers down in the... And I, um, I'm going to go on record as saying I oppose that terminology, the flats. I have gone through any high school and had nothing to hear but flats, flats, flats. And I, 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 I take that as, a, as an insult. We are Lower Woodridge. Not Upper Woodridge, Lower Woodridge. Not the flats. I sat on the Woodbridge Industrial Development Committee with a few of my colleagues here a few years ago and, and attended many meetings and devoted many a time consuming hours to the uh, development of the land vacant area across the street from my residence. And uh, I am strongly concerned that that area that I reside in and most of my family reside in still can retain the dignity that we have made it to date. I want to thank you for your attention. Good evening, Amy Morellis, 184 Women Road. I came to speak about um, a particular chapter, although I have deep concerns about the entire document that's before us tonight. Chapter six, open space. There's two problems with this. First of all, it's just plain inaccurate. And the second problem with it is it's misguided. How is it inaccurate? Well, you're gonna have to bear with me for a minute. The document starts by characterizing the state's green plan. The state has adopted, since the late 1990s, a green plan. That plan is an effort, um, as I reminded myself by looking at the DEEP website, it's an effort to ensure that 21% of the acreage of the state as a whole will be protected as open space by 2023. Of that 21% goal, 10% is supposed to be protected by the state itself, and 11% is to be protected by other entities, municipalities, Nonprofit um, like land trusts and um, by water companies. You can look at the DEP website if you'd like to confirm this because they're in the process of updating their green plan. The document before us tonight, however, says that um, the town is in compliance with the green plan because it owns at least 11% of the town land area as open space. Well, gentlemen, uh, and I'll know it's only gentlemen tonight, which is a little disappointing. Uh, gentlemen, uh, you should know that that is not a goal for this town in particular or any other town. It's 11% for the state as a whole to be owned by municipalities, nonprofits, their conservation partners. 
The fact of the matter is that this town owns way more than 11%, and I think that is one of the great attributes of this town. Now, why does it bother me that you get this wrong in this document? Well, it bothers me because the goals, when you get to your action plans, is to, first of all, maintain at least 11% of the town uh, land area as open space. Okay, so you got the number wrong. We're at 26% plus, and you're saying you should maintain at least 11%. Might just be a drafting area, but let's go on. The next thing it talks about is that one of the things that the town needs to do is develop a formal policy and procedure for the acquisition and sale of open space. Gee, that's the first I heard that people in this town have any interest in selling existing open space. Now, uh, it goes on also to develop a to recommend developing a classification system for open space. Low impact, that gets to stay as passive recreation. Moderate, which would be athletic fields, etc. And then high impact, which is a potential for future development to serve the community's facility needs. So what I see embedded in this document is a very troubling opening of a door for us not only to stop the Woodbridge tradition of the last 15 years or more of increasing our open space and making that a great amenity and an attraction to our town, but actually a formal policy that provides for the sale of open space. Now, I know that one of the things, the other thing the document points out is that a great deal of the town-owned open space is not actually protected by any legal uh, restriction on sale. Uh, we all know about the golf course, but that's what I'm here to speak about. One of the pieces is the Fitzgerald Tract, 130 acres in the center of the town. I really would like to know why you are having a document being put forth as a town plan for the next 10 years that contemplates the sale of open space, which includes the Fitzgerald Tract as well as another 400 acres because uh, according to this document, if it's accurate on these numbers, there are 549 acres of municipally managed but not protected uh, town-owned land that's currently characterized as open space. There's land also in Park Lane area. Um, I couldn't tell from the colors exactly what everything was, um, but it's deeply troubling to me that you have these concepts of sale, uh, in this document. And let me point out that it's also inconsistent with other part of your document. Chapter 8, Sustainability. 90% of people who answered the survey said protection of green space was very important, 60%, or another 30% plus said it was somewhat important. Gentlemen, please start over with respect to Chapter 6, Open Space. Thank you. to reduce the amount of open space in Woodbridge. 
since it declares a floor uh, of acceptable amount of open space, which is below uh, what we currently have. And, and I think by doing so, sets a precedent which could imply uh, the reduction of open space. That, along with the fact that, as Amy said, much of what is currently owned by the town is not, in fact, protected by any entity um, or any legal process, and therefore could lead to that um, sale of the land. And from the perspective of having land that is fully protected, um, we would expect that um, that would be achieved through uh, either grants of conservation restriction or ownership uh, by entities such as the Woodbridge Park Association uh, or the Woodbridge Land Trust, which uh, does, uh, do have restrictions on land within the town that assures that that space from the open. I would also speak to the value of open space for a town. And there's been a number of studies done by independent parties which are cited in our letter, which identify the value of open space and I think address a misconception that uh, development can oftentimes lead to increasing tax support or economic gain. And in fact, when you look at the facts across many towns, um, the empirical results are that the cost of services by development uh, is almost never covered by the taxes or gained uh, that are increased on those properties that are developed. And therefore, uh, towns with greater open space um, have a lower tax burden than those towns that have uh, tighter space. And you can actually see that uh, actually in the New Haven area when you compare uh, tax burdens in different towns. Um, additionally, in terms of the value of open space, um, it improves property values and has been shown to do so that people tend to uh, value property more greatly when it has open space in the arena. And so that uh, supports the economics of the town as well. It attracts business investment, and oftentimes there's locations where people want to work and live. Uh, it, it protects uh, indigenous species and natural habitats, which uh, can provide value for uh, those elements, promotes healthy lifestyles through the open space available, defines the character of the town, and provides spiritual and emotional sustenance. And for those reasons, I believe one of the causes of why many people come to Woodbridge and stay in Woodbridge, and our concern is if embedded in the plan uh, is the opening to divest of open space, uh, and not set uh, that as a priority that would lead to concerning results. The uh, recommendations in our submission uh, include uh, the uh, following. One is to uh, be attentive to any regional water authority lands that may come up for sale, uh, which may happen as a result of changes in the priorities of the regional water authority for its need for uh, open space for the protection of the water system. Uh, it's my understanding that that requirement may have gone down in acreage and land may come up for sale. And our hope is that the town keep an eye on that in order to uh, purchase or protect those properties should they come up for sale. Second, to invest in and maintain the greenway system in town, which is a wonderful set of trails and I think is one of the unique aspects of the town. I think that is referenced um, in the plan. To preserve farmland, recognizing that we have quite a lot of privately owned farmland in town, and that that adds to the rural and local character of the town, and to see that as a priority. Uh, to consider uh, establishing an agricultural commission, which I believe is also mentioned in the plan. To support the protection of privately owned space that comes up for sale, not necessarily through town support of financial support, but often grant money can be available to the state or federal government to protect uh, open space that is privately up for sale. Uh, to maintain a line item budget in the budget uh, of the town to purchase open space, which I believe has been there for quite some time. Uh, two more items, to support the protection of wetlands properties, which typically can't get developed but can be further protected uh, within the uh, open space environment. And finally, to uh, consider grants of conservation restriction on certain prime town-owned properties that are currently not protected 
uh, as Amy was referring to the Fitzgerald property and several other large properties that really do define the character of the town that currently have no protection on them and can be influenced by the swings of town interest uh, over time. Thank you very much. This will only take 30 seconds. I made a little mistake when I was speaking about the flats before. Um, I think it's time for the town to realize that Woodbridge is Woodbridge. There's not an upper, upper Bethany, lower Bethany. There's not an upper orange, lower orange, or different names for different parts of the town. So I think it's about time to just call it Woodbridge. Woodbridge, and get it over it. So that's, that's it. Have a night. <laughs>
My name is Martha German. I live at 1170 Johnson Road. Before this plan is voted on by the Zoning Board, I request two amendments to the wording on page 27 concerning the Country Club of Woodbridge. Under the heading, Near-Term Action Agenda, the text, quote, adopt revisions to the residence A zone to provide for active adult and open space conservation subdivision options, end of quote, must be deleted as it does not represent the will of the majority of Woodbridge residents. Similarly, the wording, quote, pursue development proposals for age-restricted lifestyle housing on the Country Club of Woodbridge property, which may include higher density housing, end of quote, must be deleted. I attended all of Malone and McBroom's charrettes. There was amazingly little discussion of the Country Club of Woodbridge at any of them. Most of the focus was on the village district. It is inconceivable that a zoning change of such gravity to the future of our town would be based on input from such a minute percentage of residents. The final report states that the largest charrette was attended by 90 people. Another one was 50 people. And only 229 individuals, including teenagers, responded to the online survey. This in a town of 8,990 residents. I have here with me proof that this zoning change and proposed development of the Country Club of Woodbridge is being pursued against the majority will. This petition, composed by my neighbor Roger Sherman and me, states, quote, we the undersigned residents of Woodbridge are opposed to any zoning change that would allow any development of condominiums or cluster housing on the property known as the Country Club of Woodbridge. We urge the Board of Selectmen not to make this change, end of quotes. And let me state that the signers were informed that the decision would be made by vote of the zoning board. More than 300 concerned residents have signed this petition. The signers represent a true cross-section of our town. They include lifelong residents, like myself, and immigrants from China and Russia, from South America and the Middle East. They range in age from their 20s to a vital and independent 93-year-old who still maintains his own home. Some live next to the Country Club of Woodbridge, but many, live, many more live on Mettler Street, Lucy Street, Clark Road, Baldwin Road, Beecher Road, Raceburg Road, White Oak Lane, and on and on. This diverse collection of residents is united in one demand we heard again and again. Don't change the zoning. I don't want building on the golf course. The town's rural character is why I chose Woodbridge. Furthermore, the monstrous current proposal by Toll Brothers is an insult to the 1,190 residents who voted down, by a two-thirds majority, the smaller 2011 Toll Brothers development proposal. This proposed zoning change and high density development are not wanted on the Country Club of Woodbridge. Such a change to the A zone, as we've been hearing, could open the door to development on the town's other two golf courses, Homewood Acres and Oak Lane. When you look at page 97 of the draft, you see a lot of places marked in yellow on the map. And those are all pieces of open space that could be threatened by this zoning change. They include also the Baldwin Road Farm Parcel, Hubble's Farm, and Shepherd's Farm. I ask you to revise the text on page 27 to reflect more accurately the majority will of Woodbridge residents. Thank you.
the Acorn Hill Road. Um, so I had a couple notes I was going to make uh, previously, but I think I need to address a comment that was made that there's some confusion here. Um, so back when Recreation heard about we were going to be involved with this 10-year plan, um, I took the time I was in, on the commission when the last 10-year plan took place. So I took a look at it. Gee, what was Recreation's contribution and what was taken from that input 10 years ago? And what I saw was there were two pages in the plan that basically spoke about here's a menu of things that Recreation does. There was really no uh, strategic look of the needs or an assessment of where there were shortages of recreational space, open space, recreational space. Uh, I know some may want to debate that. So uh, having gone through a litany of meetings, uh, going through the approval of a space for the ball field, and actually being informed uh, that we would never see anything, uh, if there was any support asked from the town, uh, recreation support of the baseball league in going the way that they went. But it was pretty clear that that painful process was because that need wasn't identified. And so when we began to get into the discussion of uh, what the needs were, we were actually the first commission to identify what we do, where the shortages were, and where things need to be added. And in the plan, we still mention the, um, the errata sheet, which is basically the things that are, have already been approved that are in process that were excluded, which will be added. But the other items that were needs would be put in. And we hear many times here in town about the needs to be a plan, needs to be a plan. I absolutely agree with that. I'll, I'll only have to give you one example. You'll see in the plan, uh, there's one item that's in there that I'm sure in the next 10 years won't happen, which is a, an additional gymnasium. It's not happening, okay? But it's in the plan. And you say, well, why would that be in the plan? Well, all you have to do is go back and some of the people here um, uh, that have been here for a long period of time could probably um, better explain the date that this happened than I can. But I guess, I think in the 70s, the building that's on Bradley Road, the sports center down there, became available to the town for purchase for, I believe, $250,000. There was no need to identify for that space at the time, and so the town passed on it. Would have been nice to have. There's a lot of items in our needs that that amount of money purchased that I've spent would have addressed a lot of needs that exist. I did want to, then I did notice, I think on page one, 50, 153, uh, the plan speaks quite a bit about us marketing the recreational space and the things that we can offer to the residents, which I think is a great idea. This also concerns me a little bit because there is such shortages and uh, actually Monday night we were supposed to have our meeting at the same time this meeting was supposed to happen. Twice a year we, we go through the field requests uh, scenario of all the people who ask to use fields. And what's kind of disappointing at the end of that meeting, how many requests that are uh, rejected because there just isn't space for those people. The comment, Brian, I think your comment was maybe properly, there might be some confusion where it came from, you can maybe correct that. I believe Coupa and Conservation were discussing the permitting of the the land and that type of thing, not recreation. So I don't want to be getting emails and things in, in the paper about we're not, recreation is not permitted, you're selling property, you're distinguishing. Uh, did we, when we did our PowerPoint presentation, um, almost two years ago, I think, we were the first commission to, to do this, um, and I was a little concerned later on that we might be forgotten because we went so early in the process, and we went and we presented to um, New folks on PP and Z, we presented to Coupon and we presented to Conservation. And you know, I'm hopeful, and I'm not going to speak to other items in the plan because you know I'm sure there's enough people here having their thoughts one way or the other on things that they may or may not agree with in the plan. I'm just primarily focusing on 
that particular uh, section. Uh, I'm hopeful when this is all said and done, uh, as I have spoken to the people on the Pop and people on conservation, that if we know where we want to put these things, we don't end up you know, arguing where they should go, and so that the, when there is a recreational need, it can be developed uh, in the areas that we prefer it to be in, rather than just saying no to any space for anything for the children in the town, where you can there's a lot of adults that participate in the recreational space. We have a lot of requests that come in for soccer and softball and a number of other activities that happen in those spaces. So, uh, for that part, I'm glad that you were involved uh, in the process. I can tell you that the Recreation Commission, um, having a little bit, some of the people on the Recreation Commission have been on the Commission a lot longer than me, and they said, oh, that won't happen, you won't get that to happen, it never happened before, and you try to get them to look at identifying our needs more strategically and to be able to accomplish the things that need to happen. It's pretty clear to me why we run into some of the things we ran into previously. Most of those people, um, you know, I'm friends with the town, and probably they would have appreciated there would be a better plan so that those things wouldn't happen to them. So, uh, thank you for that. Thank you.